we enter the song of creation. Earth cradles our ancestors, birthing new life. We enter the prayer of creation. Sky brings darkness and light, holds storms and stars. We enter the praise of creation. Mountains peaked with snow, hills swaying with grasses. We enter the silence of creation. Humanity between the ground and the heavens. We come here humbly as one earthly family to worship our creator, the giver of form, the maker of space. Amen. Amen. Hello and welcome to worship. You have arrived at the worship video for Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. My name is Jeff Schlesinger. I'm the pastor at Heart of Illinois Lutheran. Uh, Heart of Illinois Lutheran is made up of two congregations in Northern Illinois, Emmanuel Lutheran, which is south of Compton, Illinois, and First Lutheran in Lee, Illinois. We are in the midst of celebrating what we call Season of Creation. We're in the second of five weeks, and this week is Humanity Sunday. We hope that you enjoy and are moved by uh, the service we have together as we focus on God who created us and all that exists, has given us our earth home uh, and given us much, much responsibility within this earth home. We do invite you to join us uh, for worship on a weekly basis. Uh, we do have these weekly worship videos, but we'd love it if you join us in person as well. Uh, we meet at Emmanuel each Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Uh, and at First Lutheran each Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Our service uh, very much mimics what we do on our in-person services. Our liturgy is printed on the screen uh, so that you find it easy to follow with. You'll find the regular print is for the leader to read, and we invite you to respond with the bold print. Uh, the words for the songs are also uh, printed so that you can sing along with those. Again, uh, thanks for joining us for worship. Uh, we continue the service by giving thanks uh, that God has called us through the sacrament of holy baptism. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Blessed are you, O God, maker and sustainer of all things. Your song washed over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and, and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Glory to you, Lord, for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams, for Indian Creek and Bureau Creek, for, for Shabana Lake and, and Lake Mendota. Honor to you, Lord, for cloud and rain, for, for dew and snow. Your waters are, are below us, around us, above us. All life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those on the ark to safety. Hagar and her son are saved by the waters at your well. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from, from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished your people with, with water from the rock and brought them through the river Jordan to the promised land. Through your waters, Naaman was washed clean of his leprosy, and at the well, the Samaritan woman received living water. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and to freedom. The floods shall not overwhelm us and the deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit 
Wash away sin with this cleansing water. Clothe all the baptized with Christ. Claim us all as your children, no longer slave and free. All of us, one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you show, show your love for creation, creation through the humility of incarnation, incarnation, death, and resurrection. Lead us to follow your example as we fulfill your call to humanity by humbly putting others first, seeking to serve rather than to be served. Guide our servanthood toward the rocks and rivers birds and beasts, skies and seas, and all of our fellow creatures, both great and small. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I am Liam Crumpton. This is my mother, Jennifer, and my brother, Caleb. We are in New Orleans, and it is our privilege to read the Humanity Sunday readings to you. Our first reading is from the first chapter of Genesis. Then God said, let us make humanity in our image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, the, live, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on earth. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fertile, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, and everything crawling on the ground. Our psalm today is Psalm 8. Please read responsibly. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You, you whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What, what are mere mortals, mortals that you should be made mindful, mindful of them, them human beings, beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have, you have made, made them rule over the works of your hands. hands. You, you have, have put, put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The third reading is from the second chapter of Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be one of the same mind, having the same love, of being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, even though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, 
so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the readings. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeff. I'm also here in New Orleans, and our gospel reading for this Humanity Sunday is from the 10th chapter of Mark. When the ten disciples heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello, and grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You know, when I was a kid, I participated in those science fairs at school. And many of you may, be, may have, too. You remember those where you put together a project, and you got to put a display board together, and whatever other props you have, and and people come and see them, and it's like a big fair, and it's interesting activity. Um, I participated in those. Uh, one year, I remember uh, that my project was on ants. I worked with a guy named John Sauer, and he and I did, we learned more about ants that year than <laughs> I've ever known. And I remember uh, part of our project was to get an ant farm. Now, neither of our mothers were excited about us bringing ants into our house. Uh, I don't remember which of us actually ended up with the ant farm in the house, but ant farms are amazing things. You, you, you contain the ants in this little uh, area and you, you can watch them do their building. They, they, they move the sand around. Uh, they might make mounds, but they dig tunnels and make rooms and, and do all the things that the ants do right there in this um, confined place where you can watch what they do. It, it's a fascinating experience. A ants, in fact, are a very fascinating creature. Uh, they, they build hills, and below those hills is this entire tunnel system, uh, which they use to uh, perpetuate their, their species. I mean, there, there's some huge uh, ant hills. Th this one is uh, from the northern territory of Australia. I, I wish I could say I took this picture, uh, but when I was in Australia recently, I didn't go to the Northern Territory, and this picture is actually dated. It was 1977, but I guess you can still find anthills like this. That This one must be 20 feet tall. But even here in the United States, uh, you can find uh, anthills. This five-hill tall parabolic uh, anthill was found uh, in the Columbia Valley uh, in Oregon. Ants are architectural geni geniuses in many ways. They build these fascinating structures uh, as they live in their own community. Because of their building activities, ants are actually one of the most anthropomorphized uh, creatures uh, on the earth. Isn't that a really impressive word I just threw out there? Anthropomorphized, that means uh, made to look like human beings. You'll see them in cartoons, uh, being given ability to speak in comics, uh, to speak and think and, and create uh, science fiction. Often uh, the, the alien creatures that invade Earth or, or other places are often ant-like creatures. Why? Because ants are a creature that have an ability to build. You know, Human beings, and, and of course it, it is humanity Sunday, human beings, we are builders. We build all sorts of structures to, to make our life easier, to, to get along in this world. We build all sorts of structures where we live and for where we work. Some of them are, are very, very, very huge. 
some of them are, are quite unique. And some of them are, are very small, like this camper, which is where I lived for three months last summer, or my backpack tent, which is where I live uh, when I'm out backpacking. We definitely, as human beings, have the gift of building. We are builders. Now, I started this message with ants to remind us of a couple things. First, that as much as we think we are special, we aren't the only creatures in this planet that God created with the ability to build. I could have named others. I could have started with others, with bees or, or beavers, with, with prairie dogs or, or birds and their intricate nests. I know of eagles that have nests that are half a ton in weight because they keep adding to it and strengthening it year after year. Other creatures have a penchant for building and use it, use that gift that they have to create the best dwellings to give them their best life. That said, I'd like to take some time for us to think and consider why, where, and how we as human beings build. Building itself is not bad. Not at all. It's what we're created to do. Like the ants who were given the ability to build, we have been given an incredible ability to create things as human beings. It's part of who we are created to be, and we ought to be building things. But where, why, and how we build should not be determined by the fact that we can and should not be simply to increase our status as a species or individual on this planet. Think of, think of it a minute. Ant hills. Ant hills have their place, and then there are places where they ought not to be. Ant hills, when they're outside in the park, near a path, in the Oregon woods, like that, that one we saw earlier, or in the Northern Territory of Australia, those places are perfectly fine for ants to build their houses. It's okay, they should. That's where they should be building their hills. But there's places where we would prefer they don't build them. Certainly, we don't want the anthills inside or near our houses. We don't want ants getting in our kitchens or other areas of our living spaces. That's not necessarily okay with us. And perhaps there's other creatures that do not want ants building their residence near them. We, dear friends in Christ, we, as human beings, we are part of creation just like the ants are. There are right and wrong places for us to build our structures, our dwellings, our working places. For us to park our, our mobile dwelling places. There are right and wrong places to do that. We are part of this great grand earth that God gave us to live on, but we're not the only part. What are our parameters on where, why, and how we build? Think about what we heard in our scripture lessons today. When God decided to break into creation itself, when God looked down and saw that, that humanity was was messing things up. God didn't come down to take over. How, how's Paul write it? Christ humbled himself, taking the form of a slave, the form of a human being. God, Jesus had plenty of opportunities to take the throne if he wanted, but 
he, he resisted that. He didn't come to, to be great. He didn't come to take over. Jesus came not offering to help us build bigger and better or become mightier and stronger, but Jesus came to give us the gift of forgiveness, to fix our brokenness, to, to restore what's all messed up because of our own greed and, and self-centeredness. And, and in fact, what's he tell his disciples who, who, who are seeking to be great? He says, no, our job is not to be great, but it's to serve. It's, it's to serve others. How's, how's John put it in his gospel? What's the new commandment Jesus says? Jesus says, love. Love God and love your neighbor. That's it. We're, we're not put on this earth to be great. We're not put on this earth to, to build the biggest because we can. We're put on this earth to love. To love our Lord God who created us and calls us into life and loves us and redeems us. And to love our neighbors, to love others as we love ourselves. And I would contend without a doubt that our neighbors move well beyond just our human neighbors, dear friend. I mean, all of this creation has been put together and loved by God. Let the ant be an example. We are not the only ones who are given the gift as builders. Others are as well. We're not the only ones who are called to live in community. Other creatures do as well. They are our neighbors as well. So yes, indeed. When we think about how we use our gifts that God has given us, and today we focus specifically on how we use our gift of being able to build and construct we need to ask the question, how, when, and where? And those answers to those questions should be rooted not in what makes us great, but in what is the loving thing to do for our neighbor. For God loves you, brothers and sisters, but he loves your neighbor as well. Your human neighbor, your insect neighbor, the ant, and all of the creatures and plants and minerals that populate this earth home that God has given us. Amen.
people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the triune God, the God in whom we were baptized. We believe in God who creates all things to live in harmony, heaven and earth, sea and sky, sun and moon, fish and birds, mountains and valleys, forests and deserts, all animals, great and small, all human beings, and cares for all creation as our perfect loving parent. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who came to reveal the depth of God's love for all creation and teach us to live under God's reign of justice, mercy, and compassion, who suffered death on the cross to save creation from oppression, violence, and hatred, and free us from brokenness, sin, and self-conceit, who raises us with him into new life to experience joy, peace, and unity with God and all creation. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who calls, equips, empowers, and helps us to reject hatred, oppression, and violence against anyone and to extend justice and mercy, love and compassion to all created things, earth, creatures, and humans, regardless of how similar or different we are from one another. Amen. Before concluding the service with our offering and our prayers and our final blessing, we pause for announcements. Thank you again for joining us uh, for worship today. We invite you to join us each week for worship. We gather in person at 8.30 at Emmanuel uh, and 10.30 at Lee. We'd love to have you join us in person. All are welcome. You can come as you are. If you're not able to join us in person, we continue to provide these videos uh, for those who uh, aren't, for whatever reason, cannot come. So. Please continue to watch these if you're not able to join us in person. There are other uh, things happening at uh, the congregations of Heart of Illinois Lutheran. Uh, you can find our weekly calendar and announcements on either of our websites. If you'd like to receive those by email on a weekly basis, or if you don't receive it already and you'd like to receive our newsletter, please just contact us. Uh, use email might be the most efficient way to do uh, Sign up for either of those. Contact either of our churches, uh, and we'll make sure you get those. Uh, we do uh, invite you to consider making a offering to the mission of Heart of Illinois Lutheran. Uh, you can give in a variety of ways. You can uh, give online at either of our websites. You can give via um, uh, via Venmo if that's a, a medium that you use, you can mail it in or you can drop it off in person. But whatever you can give is much, much appreciated because uh, it's those gifts that allow us to continue to go forth in ministry and do things like provide these videos. Uh, and so please uh, consider uh, supporting uh, our mission. Again, it's great to have you with us for worship. We invite you back each week. Uh, we continue uh, with our uh, offering and our prayers. Turn our 
Let us pray. Loving Creator, you brought us forth from the very earth itself. We share with others what you have entrusted to us. Bless these offerings and compel us to use them not only to serve our human neighbors, but also to serve our sister sky, our brother mountain, our mother earth, and all our family in creation. We pray this in the name of the word that dwells among us. Amen. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. We pray for the church throughout the world. Form us into communities of forgiveness and grace. Help us to notice where you are calling us into new relationships and give us courage to embrace the uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the earth and all its inhabitants. Protect lands at risk of wildfire and heal dying forests. Where fire brings destruction, raise up new growth. Guide us in tending precarious ecosystems. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who govern nations, tribes, and cities. Open them to the cries of people in need. Direct them in shaping policies that prioritize the health and well-being of all who struggle with hunger and housing insecurity. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who are ill, all who are lonely or anxious, and all who grieve. Draw them close to you and soothe them with the promise of your enduring love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for teachers, professors, librarians, school administrators, staff, and all who support the education of young people. Sustain them as they shape learning communities rooted in equity and authenticity. We pray for children of all ages in their learning. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We remember our beloved dead, who with the great cloud of witnesses bear witness to your saving grace. Accompany us in our pilgrimage of faith that we too place our hope and trust in you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, the God of all creation, of flowers and trees, of butterflies and bees, of squirrels and mountain lions, bless you, keep you, and strengthen you for the work of loving all creation. In the name of the triune God, amen. amen. Go in peace, care for creation. Thanks be to God.